we don't have any wells, so it should be a little bit short for me. <laughs> there we go. Um, as Jeff mentioned, the, um, uh, the, the project is, is two on Bishop's Gate and the Broadgate Tower. Uh, the award is for the Broadgate Tower. However, the project was designed as two separate buildings that shared the same raft. Next, please. Uh, the, the project is located around Liverpool Street Station. You can see to the right. Um, it is actually forms a section of Broadgate Estate, which is in the lighter blue, uh, which is four and a half million square feet uh, and comprised over 32 buildings. The project site we had is the site shown in red. Next. Uh, this is a drawing showing Broadgate Estate and various buildings. Uh, Liverpool Street Station in the center, um, and then the tracks arrive into the station from the north, which leaves the bulk of our site um, as an open site. It was an air right site, um, and so the project really was about creating and, and healing a scar in the city and creating a site where one didn't exist before. Next. Um, it is well situated, uh, appropriate to public transport as a drawing show. Um, the, the image on the right shows another major constraint on the project, and that was uh, a view corridor in which uh, limited the height of any building um, underneath the blue area to about 13 stories. Uh, as Jeff mentioned earlier, the, the project was envisioned as a 13-story ground scraper. However, when the market started to change, we looked for other opportunities to go high, and um, that really left a very small sliver of space in the right there that uh, would allow us to, to place a tower. Next, please. Uh, the images of the raft as it was being constructed in 1995. Um, you can see it sort of being slowly encapsulated along the bottom image. Next, please. Uh, the various planning consents that we received um, and, and got over you know, what ended up being about 15 years of time. Uh, as we heard this morning, these things are incredibly expensive and they, they do take a great deal of time to, to, uh, to acquire. Uh, but finally, in, in 2005, uh, we decided to, to make a move forward. Next slide, please. A uh, brief timeline of the project. Uh, we submitted for planning in, in February of 2005. Um, this is the largest speculative office building ever undertaken in the City of London. Um, we actually started construction only nine months later after we had submitted for planning. Didn't even have planning consent before we started on site. Uh, the steel was topped out 19 months after the beginning of construction and practical completion uh, was 33 months later uh, in August of 2008. Next, please. Uh, detailed image showing the, the site specifically with the view corridor showing uh, really the only possible location for a tower on that site. Next, please. The ground floor plan showing the two various buildings, the tower on the left and the, uh, the 201 building on the right. The 201 building on the right is, is a 13-story building. Both buildings comprise of about 400,000 net square feet each. Next, please. Um, the, the section here is showing that the, the tower really begins to describe uh, one of the other major constraints, and that is the fact that the entire tower, almost the entire tower, is built over the raft, which means it doesn't have a basement. Uh, there's no place to bring things down. As the raft was built, it was designed to support a 13-story building. However, after it was constructed, we came up with the idea of uh, putting a tower on there, and the, and the challenge was really finding a way to uh, take all the load which the raft was designed to take, and, and move that somewhere else and there and by came the idea of this um, transfer structure which bypassed the raft entirely underneath the tower uh, footprint and gave rise to the, the center galleria space between the, uh, the tower and the low-rise building. Next. Uh, structural model showing uh, the, the transfer structure. Uh, it's a bit odd looking uh, and it's also a bit um, kind of interesting to watch the thing being built. Next slide, please. Uh, seeing entirely uh, an entire facade of columns being transferred out. Uh, not one column on the east facade goes straight down. They all get transferred out and um, are bearing right on top of existing uh, a caisson line down below the raft. Next slide, please. Um, you see the building going up. Next slide, please. Uh, another interesting aspect of building over a railway line is every bit of structure sat on a rubber bearing uh, to control the vibration uh, that was created by the trains below. Nothing could touch the raft that touched the building, all the slabs, all the structure, absolutely everything that had to be isolated from the raft itself. You can see on the upper right-hand side one of the nodes going in uh, with the vibration isolation. Next slide, please. Uh, and there's the building in its completed state. It is the third tallest building in the city of London at about 165 meters. Uh, Tower 42, which is in the middle, is about 183 meters. And um, 30 St. Mary's Axe, or the Gherkin, is 180 meters. Next, please.
the views from the north. Uh, the, the building draws its its um, its inspiration and its architectural expression from its from its context. Uh, to the north of the building was a, um, uh, a a bridge of the Victorian era that nobody wanted to touch and, and is nearly listed. That's the image on the right hand side. Um, and on the left, directly south of this, was another uh, SOM project that did span the railroad tracks that Bruce Graham did in the uh, mid 1980s. Next slide, please. Uh, the materials chosen uh, were stainless steel and glass for obvious reasons. Uh, the structure of the tower uh, is an externally braced frame. We chose to clad the building with stainless steel um, to express what was going on on the inside of the building as well as with the structural frame. Some early ideas and concepts uh, we had out there were to actually uh, design it and use uh, solid stainless steel uh, structure and expose it to fire and generic, but for cost reasons that wasn't possible. Next please. In between the two buildings is a, a large public space. Again, a lot of care was taken to uh, give public space back to the city. Uh, the site itself is about two and a half acres. More than half of that site was given back to the city as, as a means of public space. It also created a vital link uh, from the transportation hub of Liverpool Street Station to the emerging districts of Shoreditch to the north. Next, please. Uh, when you're in, within the public space, it's covered. Uh, it's gallery space. It's formed by one half of the transfer structure inside the public space, next please, are a series of wine bars, um, cafes, and shops uh, to, to sort of liven it and create a destination as well as a, a passageway. Next please, uh, images of, the, um, of the, the gallery space and the structure coming down. Next please, um, again you can sort of see the massive size of this transfer structure as it comes down. It really is a, a phenomenal thing to walk up against and see and sense the, uh, the entire weight of a 35 story coming down and being transferred out. Next please, uh, next please, uh, next please. We can keep going. Um, the entrances to both buildings are from the south and off of this plaza, the tower to the left and the two on building to the right. Next please. Once you enter into the lobby, uh, the lobby is nearly five stories in height and is formed largely by the transfer structure. Because it's a, a built on a raft, there was a, no location really for um, uh, elevator pits. So we actually had to sort of raise the ground level once you got into the lobby to the second and third story. We also had to incorporate double-decker lifts because the floor plate was um, uh, very, very small on the tower. And to save space, we did that. We uh, actually uh, installed the very first in the world double-decker lifts that were controlled by destination hall control. Next, please. Uh, everywhere within the lobby, um, you begin to sort of sense and experience the power of the structure above and the transfer. Uh, next, please. Uh, levels one and two, um, you begin to sort of look down into the lobby below, but nowhere within the lobby are you not keenly aware of the, uh, of the gallery of space and the structure of the building. Next, please. And I told you I'd be brief. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.